Casting of Frank Stone, the new horror game on the block that came out this week, made uh, made by the Until Dawn creators. Yeah, that's that's correct. In a yes, uh, in association with Behavioral uh, Studios, which are the creators of Dead by Daylight and um, Until Dawn creators, whose studio name eludes me at the moment. Yeah. Uh, haven't got very far into it because the three st- of us are doing a watch party of Zach playing it. So we haven't gotten far. Yeah, we're still in the opening act. Yeah, but just like kind of early impressions, you know, uh, what, what are we what are we thinking about? Like, are, are we hooked? I guess is going to be the first question. Because when it comes to, you know, horror movies, when it comes to, to horror games, I feel like the game's got to really be able to grasp you in like the prologue or the opening act or whatever. I, you know, that that's such a crucial aspect to, to horror, in my opinion. I mean, how, how are you guys feeling about just the initial start of things? I mean... I don't know how in y'all's terms, but in my terms of how everything um, feels and whatnot, it definitely keeps with the Dead by Daylight tradition, making everything very atmospheric. Because mm-hmm. like, like when the game first starts, which you know, I asked you if you heard it, whenever it's going through like all the logos and whatnot, your controller's rumbling the whole entire time, mm. like a film reel. Oh, that's cool. And everything and just the whole atmosphere of it is very well done. Each time we go to stuff from the uh, sort of opening prologue of the initial mill scene with Sam and Frank to going to present time when we get to visit the spooky dookie house. Mm-hmm. Um, and then getting the full on eighties slasher teen vibe for mm-hmm. the opening of just, yeah, these teens are about to go do something dumb and probably in miserably. Right. Right. And in terms of it just being like atmospheric as well, it just seems to also be pretty detailed, as John pointed out, with some random yeah. things in the warehouse well, just, that caught his eye. <laughs> it's just like there's some fun little like attention to detail things throughout it. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna ask because I had, I I didn't ask you guys the other night. How, do you because know, I I tend to prefer like the modern day vibe that they have going on in the creepy old like mansion in that Mm -hmm. as opposed to like like you mentioned like the 80s teens doing dumb stuff i mean and i really like that because there is a distinct different feel for both those timelines yeah Uh, i think i might prefer the modern day stuff more because i'm like i want to know what's about to happen i'm less interested in knowing what happened back in the day yeah yeah i can agree to that which it is an interesting take that we're having this spread across uh, multiple times. Yes. Yeah, because like we have the opening act, like he, like Zach said, was, which was in the '60s. Yeah, in the '60s with Frank Stone and Sam. And now, then we have the '80s timeline that you're dealing with. And yeah, which is the have... filming of the m- movie Murder Mill, which, from context, we got apparently was some cursed film that led to people killing each other in the theaters. Right. <laughs> And then we're in the present day timeline with the, with the creepy mansion. So it's like we're very we're we're all over the place in terms of, of, of yeah, time, which is the setting of this lady invited three people to the mansion to acquire the only known three known eight millimeter films of Murder Mill, mm-hmm. which begs the question: How does lady find the three people that happen to own these <laughs> <laughs> connections? <laughs> Lots of connections. That's my guess. Well, I mean, and I guess we should have started this for anyone who actually cares. It is full on spoilers for this, even though we're not that far in. But um, it more or less says that lady, she's the one who's backing Frank and trying to get the spider god. Mm -hmm. So she was also the old lady who sold them the camera in the scene with the camera. She was also the one who was Frank Stone's doctor who pushed him to start making sacrifices for the, to the spider God. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like one thing that you, you kept pointing out, uh, is there, there are a ton of just scenes where like, just based on the lighting and the angle that it, like you gain control of your character. It just looks like there's, there's hooks everywhere. Yes. Yeah. I love all the imagery. I mean, and one thing I also have noticed, like, for anyone who is an actual Dead by Daylight fan, there's just tons of stuff in it for you to notice and whatnot. Like, the 
the doll collectibles the doll collectibles the different weapons just um the little badge which i'm fairly sure is legion reference um from that and then just like the firecrackers for me being a dead by daily player knows i wish i had money for those firecrackers because at some point when frank grabs chris or whoever ends up with those firecrackers you i'd get a moment to try and drop the firecrackers Mm -hmm. and it would save somebody now someone's out of firecrackers and more likely to die yeah which is also just an important thing to note i mean like if you haven't you know played until dawn like all all of our choices are going to matter at some point you know throughout this game Uh, there'd be like an immediate payoff like leaving the stranger at the side of the road which who knows that could come back to bite us it later even though they yeah, already i mean it didn't it said I, she was she appreciated she, our wariness yeah appreciate the uh the honesty but who knows maybe later on she'd be like you know what nah fuck you you left me on the side of the road i don't know uh but no i mean every choice is gonna matter so yeah you're right with the firecrackers thing someone might be fucked now because we don't have the firecrackers to help them i'm also very curious i about started a thing i was like so what happens if you just fail the prologue does the spider god just come down and does nothing happens everyone's just dead right did you go back and check not yet okay that's a, that's a, I mean that's a good question, yeah. With how the prologue play, uh, plays out, that's a that's a valid question here. Yeah. Um, so you did say we're full spoilers, right? I mean, might as well. I mean, we're only in an opening act, so yeah. Because like in the in the initial prologue, I mean, you you shot Frank in the head, yeah, yep. and he falls into the furnace, yeah, and it's all kinds of fucked up, yeah, yep. because he falls onto like some spikes and also. And like his jaw completely comes off. But the old brutal like, shot. The old lady narrator also made a point of saying Frank didn't die when he fell into that pit, and it's like, how? <laughs> because the, because of the spider god, more or less, his he was summoning. For more or less, what I got from the bit of the opening act is he was in the finishing touches of summoning the spider god, also known as the entity, in Dead by Daylight, to more or less raise his presence there at that mill and I guess consume that sawmill and bring it into the entity's world, I guess. But because of that, he was tied enough to it where his soul more or less remained there and just needs some sort of magic voodoo to bring him back and start going on a sacrificial spree again. Yeah, it was also funny when you were walking around trying to get to the furnace. The game alerted you. It's like, it looks like someone's been doing rituals around here. And then oh, we yeah. had a couple minutes side mission of being like, where? <laughs> yeah, because the game's one of the little things. It's just like, oh, there's symbols on the wall. And he even points it out to you. And we look, and I just happened to move too quickly and it couldn't get it. And I was just like, I look back at the wall. I was like, the hell symbol are we looking at? Oh, no, I mean, the opening act was solid. The, the opening prologue, though, was solid, though. I mean, I feel like it get, gets you kind of really invested in fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, I, I am with the boat in the boat of John, though. It's just like, he, you know, Frank got all kinds of fucked up, you know, besides just Spider God shenanigans. I'm, I'm curious to see what this guy's going to be like when he comes back. Because obviously he's coming back. Yeah. You know, it's the whole game's around him. So what's this guy going to be like when he comes back? What kind of sort of Jason Voorhees level bullshit do we got going on? I mean, he's probably honestly just going to be himself. Probably. He'll probably look the exact same. Because literally for uh, Dead by Daylight lore, literally mostly all the killers, have whatever their backstory is, for the most part, there's no actual record of them dying. They just sort of disappear. And I guess the entity picks them up. And takes them to his limbo world, mm-hmm. and they just remain looking the same for the rest of their lives within his world. Random question: so. Is Frank Stone a playable character? No. What you do get if you spend ten dollars more on the game is a special cosmetic outfit for the Trapper to look like Frank Stone. Oh, okay. No, he's a completely original character. For See, this. That's, what, that's what I thought is that he was because, yeah. like, my next question would be: Could they possibly make more of these games on other other killers? Almost definitely. Yeah. I mean, all the killers, because they've, over the last couple of years, really gone full on on, like, the lore and whatnot of all the characters, both survivors and killers. Mm-hmm. Dead by Daylight, is, is it still popping off? Oh, yeah, they just released the new Castlevania chapter. Oh, well, good for them. I mean, it's still going strong. The only bad thing about Dead by Daylight is uh, the community's pretty toxic on PC. I don't doubt that. Um, <laughs> I mean, last time I played on Xbox, it wasn't too bad, Um but it wouldn't surprise me if it's become toxic too. 
Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, it'd be interesting to see if they end up making the same sort of direction of a game for other of the killers. Like, just like maybe it's like some small scale games, you know? Probably it doesn't have not. to be a full full scale game or anything. Probably not. Probably I, won't do it, but it, yeah. it'd be curious. I would assume they they wouldn't. They would probably try to partner with another franchise to make another right. game kind of like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because all the killers are have fairly interesting backstories. I mean, the doctor's fairly interesting. Um, overall, all of them. I mean, even though I play them, I think the one of the least interesting is Legion, even though that's one of my main killers I play. Mm-hmm. Legion's, it's literally just a group of four people who decided that they're just going to be packed murderers. <laughs> Quite literally all it is. <laughs> the one negative that I have about the game is there's no director's mode. It's the one negative I've got. Again, I don't know what the cutting room is, other besides the little bit of red. Apparently, it's not as you just go jump back to certain choices to either shoot, make a different choice or find collectibles. So it might be more like director's mode, but you've got to finish a playthrough to find out. Yeah, I feel like the cutting room is more so the first thing that you said. I feel like it's the easy way once you beat the game for the first time to go through and make different choices. Yeah, yeah that's I, what I it like, seems like. I feel like yeah. that's all it is. So no director mode is an L. Like that, that is something that I feel like all these horror games need to have because the quarry with director mode is fantastic. So I, ho- I hope we can see that. That may be just ma- main feature for their main games. That's I mean, what I was going to say yeah. is like, because these are, I mean, they're, these these type of games, they're fairly similar, yeah. but it are it is different people actually going about it. So one of one like developer and that being like, yeah, director's mode is going to be something going forward or something like that's that's cool to have and it's a nice option for those games. But it's like, I mean, until Don never had a director's mode, did it? Uh, no, it was introduced with the quarry. I hope the remake has it. Yeah, because it's. I mean, it's one of those where I don't know how long like the casting of Frank Stone is, but like until Don wasn't that long of a game so like playing through it again wasn't too bad yeah yeah i mean with the quarry on direction mode i mean if we did two sittings and one it was like two three hour sittings yeah. yeah it was like yeah i think we did like one three hour sitting and then it was like a shorter second half of the game yeah so i mean somewhere was i want to say it was around five hours altogether mm-hmm. um i mean wasn't too bad with and that was with Ever them being partial idiots. <laughs> True. And I mean, it's only in the quarry because the, because the Dark Anthology hadn't finished releasing yet when the quarry came out. And I know it's not in uh, House of the Devil or um, I forget what the third one is, which is sad because the third one was the best one in the anthology. And yeah, I can't remember what it is right at the moment. But yeah, I mean, it would be it would be nice for like games like that to even after the fact, like, include a director's mode or something. Yeah. It is really cool to have, because, like, playing through them is kind of the intention. Yeah. But a director's mode where you can kind of, like what we did, set, it's like one person just controls it, starts it, set the controller down, and you just sit there and watch a long movie. Yep. Yep. I I really hope the Until Dawn remake has it included, especially since, you know, the quarry had it, you know, going over the next thing. But I also saw this. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, Apparently, the Until Dawn remake uh, team are now being faced with a ton of layoffs right before the game comes out. It's like, come on now. What are we doing? It's like, that sucks. But I would love to see the Until Dawn remake have director's mode. Because, like, as much as I love Until Dawn... I've played it like eight times. So yeah. it's like if I if I get the remake like pretty early, right? If it has director's mode, I'll buy it day one. I'll, I'll say it up front. I'll buy, I'll buy it immediately. I don't care. You know, that's the first thing I'll do is I'll just go turn on director's mode, you know, because I've already played the game enough times. Like, yeah. let's just go watch it. Let's go see what chaos can happen in the game when I set certain characters yeah. to be smart or stupid or whatever. Yeah. If it had it, I'd sit down and watch it with you. Oh, yeah. Because that's one where like I never actually sat down and – like played until dawn right i just i watched like six or seven playthroughs of it it's a great game to watch (laughs) it's like i like when it came out i was i was following like video series of people playing it and and that and then it was also one where 
like hanging out with Alec, anytime somebody showed up that had never played it, he'd just turn it on and go, you're playing this now, and then you just sit there and watch them. Yep. <laughs> Good times. I mean, overall, though, so far, opening act, uh, casting of Frank Stone, solid for me. Um, I'll be curious to see where it goes as we get into the actual torments and whatnot. Because yeah. also, the fact is, this is the first one of their games that has a difficulty level. Mm-hmm. And which, me being me, I just went, sure, let's go hardest one. Yeah. Which is called Sacrifice. And the game's just like, yeah, good luck. You're going to die. Yeah, basically. There's no chance of survival. I feel like we're already seeing that difficulty level with uh, like the QTE stuff you were battling. See, I think that was just with how I have to set it up to stream it to you guys. Okay. Because I got to more or less cloud play it through um, Xbox app on my PC to cloud connect with... Uh, my game, mm-hmm. my console, because like yeah, for it has the DVD QTEs for generators, and it, I'm like had like a two second delay. Mm-hmm. It's it's bad. Yeah. All right. Well, keep that in mind if you're if you're also going to play this with friends on Discord. Keep that in mind. <laughs> I mean, if you're on PC, it may not be as bad, but at least for me, cloud streaming it on with through Xbox to Discord, QTEs are rough. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean, overall, the beginning of the game, definitely interesting. Uh, looking forward to getting a chance to, to continue on with it. Uh, I did see that it, the game actually wasn't reviewed super well. I was really dis- disappointing. I was like, I, I didn't yeah, think Yeah, I, I saw that as well. Yeah, like it got, it got some low scores. And I'm going to say, I thought, I thought the game was kind of interesting so far. But I mean, you know. I mean, they have full playthroughs and overall. So we may come become disappointed towards the end. So. Uh, that's true. That's true. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's not a complete shit show. You know, I, I guess we'll see, though. I'm also hoping that same thing out of um, uh, Emio whenever I finally sit down to play yeah. it. Because I played chapter one. And chapter one already alone like has me hooked, and I, I you know, Christina's dead ass adamant. She's you know where I keep saying like dumb shit, like just yeeting predictions out. She's like, it's not that kind of game. I'm saying like, I think it's that kind of game where I like I, you know we're getting all these like little teases of things. I'm like I think he's the killer. It's like she's like it's not that kind of game. I'm like I don't believe you. I think it's that kind of game. But I mean, it's pretty interesting through the chapter one that I played of the demo. Uh, I'm gonna probably play it more later. Uh, where you know the first case that you have opened up was uh, a high school kid that was murdered in a park, and he had the smiling bag put over his head, and then you just kind of open up a can of there was a ca- a string of murders like 18 years ago that were all similar. There was three teenage girls that were all murdered, all with put the bags over their head, and there's also like the urban legend of the smiling man. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different, you know, elements that are all kind of popping up and all kind of being brought together, but I keep pointing out different things to her. It's like, I think th- this person's sus as fuck. She's like, it's not that kind of game. It's not that like, I don't, bl- I think it's that kind of game. It's like these people are sus, but no, looking forward to playing that and actually, you know, ex- hopefully it is actually as good as I'm reading that it is. And it is actually just a really disturbing story, which I'm, I'm down for that. I like horror games like that. Yeah. 